it's a good place to be. Yeah, amen. Uh, I like it, but I don't like it so much. So I'm like him to build a house and stay here. Yeah. Nothing wrong with this place, except it ain't my place. Yeah. God, so God's got a place He wants all of us to be at. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I think it's Vance Haydner that said that if Elijah, if Elijah went anywhere other than by the broke chair, but he'd starve to death. Yeah. And uh, you might get fed a little bit, uh, different places, uh, but you'll never get the full blessing unless you get where God wants you to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I just always believe there's a place that God wants everybody to be uh, and we need to find that place and get there. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it may not even seem like the place you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. But God knows it's the place you need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we've had a good day, we've had a good week. And like I said, I love to come up here. I love this place. and uh, I love the liberty that you have here to preach. And, uh, and I'm just uh, thank the Lord that I've got a place like this to preach at on a Wednesday night. Amen. I thank you for inviting me up. Appreciate you for coming out tonight. And uh, tonight I'm going to preach a message I really hadn't planned on preaching this week. And uh, as I got my stuff together, every preacher knows what I'm saying here. And uh, I looked at my stuff I used to preach this message, and I thought I won't preach that. And uh, so I didn't get it. But then I come up here, and about Monday night, God began to deal with me about preaching this message this week. And uh, and the, the few little things I used to preach this message, I, about the only place I can find them down home is at Hobby Lobby. And, uh, and I looked up on your, uh, I looked up around here, and the closest Hobby Lobbies was about, looked like 45 minutes to an hour away from here. I just want to chill a coffee, and I asked Brother Coble at breakfast, I said, how far is it from here to chill a coffee? And he said, it's about an hour. I said, I asked him far to ask him to drive or for me to drive. And uh, so when we got done uh, eating breakfast, we went to eat the children around the lake down there. And, and we come back, he let me out of my truck, and I seen that Walmart across from Bob Evans, and I thought, well, they won't have it, because I looked at all of them down around the home, they didn't have it. I thought, well, I'll try, and uh, and sure enough, I went over there, and I couldn't believe it. They had one of each what I needed. Amen. Yeah. And uh, this sermon may not be worth a quarter, but it cost me $20. <laughs> 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 and uh, I want you to turn tonight to the book of Leviticus, chapter number 23 tonight. And I want you to bear with me as I, it's got kind of a, not a real long introduction, but somewhat boring introduction, but I need to read it in order to get to the message. The message won't be too long uh, when I get to it. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to begin reading in verse 33 tonight. We're going to read to the end of the chapter. Yeah. And, uh, and I want you... Uh, I'm just going to let you stay seated tonight because I want you to read it with me and I want you to keep your Bible open. And we'll be we'll be going back to the first part of chapter 23 and I want you to follow me through on this uh, introduction. Like I said, uh, it's somewhat boring because a lot of people don't know a lot about these things. Uh, yeah. But I promise you that when we get to the message, it will apply to you. Yes. And uh, I think the the way the Bible helps me most is when I can make a personal application. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do tonight. And so beginning in verse 33 of chapter 23, the Bible said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And on the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no sireable work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation. That word convocation just means a gathering. And he said, And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no sireable work therein. 
These are the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer, to make an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a and a meat offering and a sacrifice and a drink offering and everything upon his day. Yeah. Besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord. Seven days on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of a thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in the booth seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Amen. Father, we just come to you tonight Amen. and we thank you for the Word of God, what we've read tonight, and uh, we pray the Holy Ghost who uh, moved upon holy men of God yeah. a long time ago, Lord, to write down these words. May the Holy Ghost that moved upon them move upon us and yeah. help us to find application and meaning to our lives yeah. way down here in 2021. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, my shortcomings, and my failures. Yeah. And I pray just now, God, that you'll bind every hindering spirit that the Lord might try to hinder the free course of the Word of God tonight. Yeah. Lord, let it have free course. Let it be clear. Let it be understandable. And let it be a blessing tonight yeah. to God's people. And Lord, we pray for that one tonight that may not know the Lord tonight as their own personal Savior. And may the night be the night that they're visited from the divine a uh, spirit of God in their yeah. heart would be strangely warm tonight yeah. and they'd realize their lost condition and what they've been missing and they'd come to Jesus tonight and we'll thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen and amen. 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 Leviticus 23 records the seven annual feasts God commanded Israel to celebrate upon their deliverance from the bondage of Egypt. And their entrance into the promised land. They're all listed here. Yeah. Uh, the Passover is there in verse 5. Mentions the Passover. Uh, back at the beginning of chapter 23. In uh, verse 6 we have the feast of unleavened bread. Right there in your Bible. Yeah. And then in verse 10 we have the feast of what they call first fruits. Yeah. And then in verse 16 we have what we call Pentecost. And then in verse 24, we have the Feast of Trumpets. And then we have in verse 27, the Day of Atonement. Yes. And then in verse 34, finally, we have the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. Now, of these, uh, of these seven feasts that we have pointed out here, not elaborated on, uh, but of these seven feasts, there were three of them uh, uh, that was to be an extended celebration. Yeah. Uh, there was three of them uh, that began on one Sabbath and ended on the next Sabbath, making a total of eight days each. Uh, they are recorded here in Leviticus and Exodus 23. They are these three that was a uh, was to be a uh, a continual thing, more than just a day, uh, and it was the feast of unleavened bread. Uh, uh, we associate that with what we call our Passover. Yeah. And uh, you know, if you know your Bible, that's in Exodus 12 where that God commanded uh, Moses and Aaron to tell the people uh, uh, to get a lamb and to kill the lamb and to do all that God instructed them to do. Uh, and that night, the death angel was going to pass through. Uh, but God said, when I see the blood, uh, 
I'll pass over you. Uh, uh, now, uh, we find our association with that in uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, where the Bible said Christ uh, is our Passover. Right. Christ is our Passover sacrifice for us. Uh, you say, Brother Rick, why did they call it the Passover? Well, it speaks of a pardon, amen. I, I'm glad tonight that when I got saved, I didn't get put on parole. Right. I'm glad that I got a pardon, thank God. Amen. An unconditional pardon tonight. Uh, and the reason that it's called a Passover, and this is a blessing here, uh, is because our past uh, is over, thank God. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad tonight, aren't you, uh, yeah. uh, that those of us that had a past that we might have been ashamed of, uh, I'm glad that once we met Christ, uh, our past is over, thank right. God. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that's what we call the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, and then we have the other one called the Feast of First Fruits. Uh, and it's associated uh, uh, with Pentecost. Uh, and uh, it don't have to do with the pardon of God, but it has to do with the presence of Christ yes. uh, uh, in our life. Amen. Uh, Jesus told those disciples in John 14 and 17, uh, he said, you know him, uh, talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, for he dwelleth with you uh, and he shall be in you. Yeah. Uh, uh, you see, this was different than in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, the, the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit seemed to come upon people uh, uh, when they needed him and then he would lead the people. Uh, but Jesus said, we're going to do something new. Uh, and Jesus said uh, uh, that he said, I'm going to send the comforter and he's going to come to dwell with you uh, and he's going to be in you. Yes. Uh, I'm glad tonight that the Holy Ghost is in me. Uh, right. And really what that means tonight is God is in us. Yeah. Uh, because the Holy Ghost, uh, he's the third person of the Trinity, but he also uh, uh, is God. Amen. Yes. Uh, uh, Jesus said, I'm going away. Uh, it's expedient for you that I go away because if I don't go away, the Comforter will not come. Uh, yeah. uh, but he said when he's come uh, uh, he'll prove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment to come uh, and all down through there but Jesus said uh, if I stay here with you uh, he said I can't be with everybody uh, I can just be with these little bunch of disciples here or these 5,000 over here uh, uh, but he said it's expedient that word means good better necessary uh, he said because if I go away uh, I'm going to come back in the form of the Holy Spirit uh, and I'll be with everybody all the time Amen. Amen. Uh, that knows Amen. the Lord Amen. 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 Uh, then we have that last one that we want to really focus on tonight and it's called the feast of harvest or in gathering uh, and it's associated with the tabernacles uh, and uh, it don't speak of the Lord's presence or the Lord's pardon, uh, but it speaks of the Lord's provision. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Lord said, I want you to hold this feast, uh, uh, this feast of tabernacles, and I want you to remember uh, when I brought you out of Egypt uh, and I made you dwell in booths uh, and I fed you with manna from heaven and I've uh, done all these things for you. I want you to remember how I provided for you. Uh, yeah. And uh, we bring that over into the New Testament uh, in the Philippians 4 verse 19 uh, and he said but my God uh, I shall supply all your need uh, according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I, I pastor appreciation month was this month and some of my men come to me, my members come to me and they said brother Rick what do you want? Uh, and uh, I said let me think about it a couple of days uh, and uh, I thought about it and I come back and they said what do you want? Uh, I said well I don't want nothing uh, I said I sat down tried to think of something I needed and I didn't need anything uh, I've got everything I needed yeah. amen yeah. Uh, and I shouldn't have been surprised about that because the Lord uh, he promised that uh, yeah. uh, he promised to supply every need amen yeah. now I want you to notice several things about the feast of tabernacle that's recorded here in verse 34 through verse 43. Number one there in verse 36 uh, it said during the feast of tabernacle all Israel was to appear before the Lord uh, with a daily offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh, 
I, I know I, I think about this. Uh, did you know there's a lot of people, uh, uh, and some of them don't even think this much, but there's a lot of people in this whole world, uh, and they think the only time they ever need to appear before the Lord is on Sunday morning. Uh, yeah. You know any people like that? Uh, yeah. uh, they appear before the Lord on Sunday morning, and then uh, they're not there anymore. They don't pray. They don't read the Bible. They don't come on Wednesday night. Uh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and there's people like that. Yeah. Uh, but do you know, I think that you and I, as Christians, I think that even if you're not a Christian, I, I think you and I ought to appear before the Lord every morning we get up. Yeah. I, I think we ought to get that Bible. We ought to read some verses. We ought to get out on our knees yeah. and pray and talk to God. I, and I think we ought to bring ourselves before Him every day of the week, seven days a week. Yeah. But then, I said during this feast, they were to move out of their homes and they were to dwell in huts or tabernacles uh, made especially for this very occasion, uh, the Bible said. Uh, and so they were to dwell in booths. And we'll hit that again in a minute. Uh, but number three, their observance was to remind Israel of God's provision for them during that 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Uh, God said you need a time uh, I work for at least a week. You sit down uh, and you think about where I brought you from. Uh, and you think about what I've done for you and what I've provided for you. And he said, uh, you just need to think about that. Amen. Uh, and so that was connected with the Feast of Tabernacle. But it was during this period, uh, it was a time of rejoicing uh, and celebration. Uh, yeah. And uh, the Lord, uh, he, he told them some things to do. Uh, right there in verse 40. And he said, you shall take you uh, of the first day of the boughs of goodly trees. Uh, of branches of palm trees. Uh, uh, that's that right there. Uh, and then he said, he said, and the boughs of thick trees uh, and the willow trees. Uh, and so the Lord says, uh, uh, you need, when you come together, you need palms uh, and you need willows. Uh, the Lord said, now it's noted uh, uh, that in the early centuries and, and then when all of this was taking place, uh, and they got on down into the New Testament, uh, uh, they, they were commanded, of course, to observe uh, uh, the feast and the days even in the New Testament. Uh, uh, but a great controversy arose. Uh, uh, there were two sects in that day, uh, and uh, one of them was called the Sadducees. Uh, and the Sadducees, uh, uh, they thought that during this time uh, uh, that the palm leaves uh, uh, and the willow trees, uh, uh, that they were to be used. Uh, uh, but they thought the way they were being used uh, was when they made their booths uh, uh, that they crossed them up like that uh, on the top of the booths uh, and they were to leave them open so when they laid in them booths at night uh, uh, they could look up and then see the stars and the heaven uh, and then have to think about God. Uh, yeah. uh, did you know every now and then we need something to make us look up? Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, so many are like the proverbial hog uh, uh, that eats acorns all day long. Uh, but he never looks up to see uh, uh, where they come from. Uh, yeah. uh, have you looked up today uh, uh, when you ate breakfast and dinner and supper? Uh, uh, did you look up and thank God where it come from? Uh, yeah. It didn't come from McDonald's. Uh, uh, it didn't come from Burger King. Uh, uh, it didn't come from Ponderosa. No, the good God of heaven. Yeah. Uh, uh, he yeah. fed you uh, and he fed yeah. me today. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, but the Sadducees thought uh, uh, that they ought to be used to make the booths uh, and nothing else. Uh, uh, but the Pharisees, uh, uh, they had different thoughts about this uh, and they thought that the palms and the willows, uh, uh, that they ought to have been uh, used in our daily rejoicing before the Lord. Uh, and so what they did, uh, uh, they would take the palm leaves uh, and the willow leaves uh, and they would take a golden thread uh, and they would tie them together uh, and they would use them as they were worship the Lord and as they thank the Lord. Now actually uh, not only did I find palm leaves, not only did I find willows, uh, and you say they don't look like a willow, I got the tag if you want to read it. <laughs> uh, but I tell you what, uh, I, I even found golden thread. Uh, uh, but somewhere between Walmart and my motel room, uh, uh, or either they didn't put it in the bag or I dropped it out, 
I don't know, but it's not necessary anyway. Uh, uh, but the, eventually, eventually, uh, it came that the Pharisees uh, uh, and the Sadducees, uh, it came eventually that they did both. Uh, uh, they made the booths, uh, uh, but they also used them in praising the Lord. Uh, uh, now we realize uh, if you know your Bible, uh, you don't have to know too much Bible to know this. Uh, uh, but you know a psalms, uh, a, a palm tree leaf, uh, a palm tree, uh, it symbolizes prosperity, joy, triumphs, and good times. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. uh, when you look at Psalms 92 and verse 12, uh, the Bible said the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Uh, yeah. uh, it said he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Uh, why you remember in John 12, uh, uh, in verse 12 and 13, uh, when our lovely Lord uh, I fulfilled that scripture of Zechariah yeah. and he come riding in on that little donkey uh, and he come riding in and the Bible said they grabbed palm leaves uh, yeah. uh, and they said Hosanna to the son of David uh, yeah. and the Bible said they waved them and they laid them down uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the pathway uh, and oh they were rejoicing uh, uh, because the king had come yeah. amen yeah. Uh, yeah. and so those palm leaves uh, uh, they always symbolized uh, prosperity, joy, and triumph. Uh, the Bible said on the next day, much people were coming to the feast, and when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, uh, they took branches of palm trees uh, and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, but just like that palm leaf uh, uh, represents uh, uh, good times, uh, uh, blessed times, joyous times, uh, uh, triumphal times, uh, that will uh, in the Bible symbolizes uh, poverty and pain and trouble uh, and bad times. Uh, uh, Why well, you'll remember if you know much about the Bible, if there's any Psalms uh, that you might remember, it'd be Psalms 100 uh, and verse 37 and verse 1 and 4 uh, and the Bible said by the rivers of Babylon there we sit down uh, yea we wept uh, and it said when we remember Zion uh, we hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof uh, for they, there they that carried us away captive required of us a song uh, and they that wasted us required of us verse saying sing us uh, one of the songs of Zion how they said how shall we sing the song uh, of the Lord in a strange land yeah. uh, I want you to know that was a sad time for them yeah. Jews yeah. amen yeah. Uh, uh, they hung their hearts on the willow now I realize tonight being from Kentucky and you being from Ohio I realize when we think about a willow tree, uh, uh, we don't think about anything that looks like that. But the willow in Israel was a little different. Uh, but you and I, we can use either one. I saw one today. My uh, brother Steve had me out showing me some things. Uh, and I saw a willow tree. I almost said, stop, preacher. Uh, and I thought I'd go down there and cut some branches off that. Uh, and I thought, well, that might not be good. I might get thrown in jail. Amen. <laughs> and so I didn't do that. But we all know what a willow tree is. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, you know what we call them down home? We call them weeping willows. Uh, weeping uh, you say why? Because their limbs are always hung down. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and that willow tree, uh, it always, it always represents uh, a sadness and and defeat and discouragement and all of that. Uh, now, having said all of that with the background, it won't take me but a little bit to preach the message. Uh, but I want to, I want now to show you some things, uh, and I want to preach tonight uh, on the palms and the willows. Yes. Uh, right. The palms and the willows. Amen. Uh, uh, you see tonight, first of all, let me say uh, that both palms and willows uh, are closely associated in life. Uh, yeah. uh, notice there in verse 40, uh, there's only a few words between them. Uh, the Bible said the branches of palm trees uh, and the boughs of fig trees. Uh, uh, and the willows, one, two, three, four, five, six words in between the palms uh, yeah. and the willows. Uh, both are mentioned in the celebration of the tabernacle uh, as God had provided for Israel when he delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. Uh, I, I want to say this, uh, both palms and willows have been found uh, in the lives of all people. Uh, yeah. Everybody here in this room tonight, 
has had a lot of palm days. Uh, you look back through your that picture album uh, and you see Christmas time and Thanksgiving uh, and family reunions and church homecomings uh, yeah. and all them was palm days uh, and that uh, we worshiped and waved our palm leaf before the Lord. Uh, uh, but just like everybody uh, uh, had them kind of days, uh, uh, we've all had these kind of days. Uh, yeah. uh, we've all had the days uh, uh, when we laid that down uh, and we picked up this uh, and there was death in the family. Uh, uh, there was a tragedy in the family. Uh, there was trouble down at the church. Uh, uh, there was problems in the home. Uh, the young people had went astray. Uh, uh, the financial situation had got difficult. Uh, oh yes, all of us. Uh, uh, we have our palm days uh, and we have our will of days. Amen. Uh, uh, why did you know tonight uh, if we were to go to uh, if we were to go to blossoms in buds in Hillsboro? Yeah. If we were to go down there to the florist, uh, did you know what? Uh, they, not, they not only sell uh, bouquets of joy, uh, but they also sell wreaths and things to go on the uh, casket down at the funeral hall. Right? Uh, you say, why is that? Uh, because that's the way life is, amen. Uh, Job said in Job 14 and 1, man, uh, that is born of a woman is a few days uh, and full of trouble. Uh, and James said in James 1 and 17, uh, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above uh, and it cometh down from the Father of lights uh, with whom is no barrenness, neither shadow of uh, turning. Uh, uh, that's the way life is. Uh, 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 did you know uh, that palms and willows, uh, as I said, they are closely connected in every life. I, I, as a pastor for 40 years, Brother Steve has done this. I, I stood with a family on Sunday morning uh, and we rejoiced in the things of God. Uh, we sung the songs of Zion. Uh, we hugged each other. We laughed together uh, only to have my phone to ring an hour later uh, and a car wreck and somebody's been killed. An uh, uh, accident has happened uh, and immediately we win uh, uh, from palms and waving palms. Uh, uh, in the waving our willow branches, amen. Uh, uh, that's just the way that life is. Uh, they're not palm years and willow years. Uh, uh, they're not people that has nothing but palm years. I know sometimes you think they are, uh, and you look at somebody and you think, well, they don't ever have no problems. Uh, everything always goes their way. Uh, and then uh, and then you look at them. Uh, oh, no. Everybody, 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 every man that's ever been born of a woman, uh, uh, he has a uh, uh, will of days, uh, yeah. and he has palm days. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, now listen, uh, uh, it's like this. Uh, a missionary came into a church, uh, and the male missionary got up uh, and he talked about paradise uh, he talked about white beaches uh, he talked about beautiful plants uh, he talked about flowers he talked about pleasant weather uh, all year round uh, he sat down and the wife got up uh, and when the wife got up uh, uh, she talked about uh, she talked about deadly snakes uh, uh, poisonous bugs uh, spiders as big as your hand uh, uh, you say what are you saying uh, uh, there's always palms uh, and willows in every place and in every life. Right. Amen. Uh, yeah. Every ever rose, every rose bush has its rose, uh, but it also has its thorn. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's just the way the curse of this old creation has made it. Amen. Uh, you see, both palms and willows uh, are often repeated in every life. Uh, yeah. I wish I could tell you, well, you tell me about your death, your sickness, your problems. Uh, I wish I could tell you, well, thank God, uh, you've got your will of years behind you. And now all that lays ahead of you is your palm years. Uh, uh, but I'd be lying to you. Yeah. You see, it don't work that way. Uh, uh, they're connected. They work hand in hand. Uh, yeah. It ain't 15 years of palm years uh, and the rest of your life. Uh, uh, will of branches, it's not... It's not, it's not 50 years of willow branches and 10 years of palm branches. I, I, they are intermingled in our life as the divine uh, counsel of God decides yeah. they need to be. I, right, man. That's the way it is, you yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. You might have many seasons of palm trees. You might have many seasons of willow trees. Yeah. You might be here tonight and you say, Brother Rick, I've been waving that thing. Seems like it's just been one thing after the other. 
You say, Brother Rick, most been good down at my house. We just we ain't had nothing but palm trees. But let me tell you, if you've had bad and you've been waving this for a long time, I can promise you this is coming up. Right. And if you've been waving this for a long time, I can promise you that somewhere down the road is this. Yes. yes. Life, life is made up of palms and willows. Amen. Matthew 5 says so much. He said, For he, our heavenly Father, he make the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. He sendeth rain on the just, uh, and he said on the unjust. Uh, uh, every, man every man experiences both the sun and the storms, amen. Yeah. Uh, you take Job. Uh, uh, why, Job, what is there, uh, 42 chapters in Job? Uh, and uh, the first two chapters, a man, the uh, first two chapters, a man never been so blessed as Job was in that first chapter down uh, to about the end of that chapter. A man never been so blessed. Uh, and then from chapter 2 all the way over to chapter 42, uh, old Job's just standing down there with balls all over him. Uh, and his wife are trying to get him to quit on God. Uh, all 10 of his children are dead. Uh, and old Job's are waving that thing for 42 chapters. Uh, you say, Brother Rick, that don't be seen fire. Uh, well, we don't know how long Job was away from this uh, right. uh, before we even start in chapter 1. Uh, right. It took a while to get all them sheep and all them cattle and all them children and all that money. Uh, uh, no, sir, you see, uh, I tell you what's been my own experience uh, and what's been the experience of watching people uh, is that almost everybody has a lot more palm years uh, uh, than the new will years. Yeah. Amen. God, uh, he evens it out. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've told this before. Makes me think of uh, my little granddaughter, Davy. Like I've told this here. When she was just a little bitty girl, about well old enough to go to, uh, to kindergarten. And she was uh, about four or five. And I'd take her out and put her in the back seat of my truck and I'd drive her over to the Baptist church where she'd go to kindergarten every day before he school. And I'd put her in that car seat right behind me and we'd start going down the road. And I'd start singing some song, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know. Well, the Bible tells me so. And we'd sing it on that four-mile route from my house down to the Baptist church. I, and then I'd try to teach a little Bible verse, and I'd say, uh, honey, John 11, 35, said Jesus wept. I, and I'd try to teach her about uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish. I, but one day we started on our journey one morning, I, and the clouds were dark, the skies were dark, I, I, the thunder was a rolling, the lightning was a flashing uh, and I carried her uh, out there and put her in that car seat in the back of my truck uh, and the buckled her in, we started down the road uh, and I commenced to sing uh, rain, rain, go away uh, come again some other day uh, and I noticed she wasn't singing with me uh, and I stopped to see what the problem was uh, and about the time I stopped that little sweet voice come from that little old girl uh, and she said Papa, she said God God made the rain also. Uh, and I'll tell you, I don't have the babes. God spoke to my heart. Uh, yeah. And God said, I'm not just in the sunshine business. I'm in the rain and the yeah. storm yeah. and the cloud business as yeah. well. Uh, yeah. Well, I told that in our jubilee on a Sunday night. And Brother Daniel Waters was there. And uh, Brother Waters, a great singer, great preacher. And, uh, and after that meeting was over, uh, Brother Waters called me. And he said, Brother Prophet, he said... Uh, he said, I wrote a song about that story about you and your, and your grandbaby. And he said, I'm going to send it to you. And I said, well, good. I'm going to stop here just a minute. And I'm going to try to play this for you. Yeah. And I hope to God nobody calls me while it's playing. <laughs> Listen to this song that he wrote.
you 50 willows. No, when we look at the palms and the willows, we have to realize that they're not evenly distributed in life. Right. Did, you ever, did you ever see somebody that it looked like that, that all they had was trouble? And there's good people. They love the Lord. They were faithful to the Lord, but it looked like sickness and death and problems and tragedies. It looked like that was all they had. I, and then other people, as I mentioned a minute ago, it looks like that all their life they've got nothing but palm branches. Everything they touch turns to gold. I, and uh, we look at that and we question that. We wonder why about that. I, I, well, God helped me about that. I said it kept me down in uh, uh, Georgia uh, back a few months ago. And I was down there in this camp meeting and uh, and got up early every morning, read my Bible and stuff, and, and I got up and God led me to this verse, uh, and it really helped me. Uh, and uh, that night we went to the camp meeting, there's a preacher there, and, uh, and through the week he told he was really going through the fire. Uh, and uh, I felt so sorry for him. I, well, one night it got on pretty good. I, and everybody was waving their palm branches. And everybody was uh, uh, having a big time. I, and I looked back there. And my brother was back there. And he, he was weeping. He's crying. I, and I wouldn't do this unless I felt that God lead me to do it. Because I wouldn't want nobody to take it the wrong way. I, I, but I went over to that brother. And I said, brother, I, I said, God, I, I showed me something this morning. And I think that maybe God showed it to me so I could show it to you. I, 
And he said, I want to see it. I, I said, I, I've wondered at times uh, why do some preachers just uh, have hell all the way? I uh, uh, seem like from the start to the finish. Uh, and other people, not only preachers, but other people, uh, uh, they have nothing but problems all the way. Uh, and I said, I read this verse. Uh, and it said, God said in Numbers 31 uh, and verse 23, He said, Everything uh, that may abide the fire, uh, ye shall make it go through the fire uh, and it shall be clean. Uh, nevertheless it shall be purified with the water of separation uh, and all that abideth not the fire uh, ye shall make go through the water. Uh, in other words God was saying uh, I think some of you you couldn't make it through the fire uh, and so I ain't going to send you through it. Uh, I'll send you through the water I'll send you what you can handle uh, and I said brother uh, maybe the reason that you're going through what you're going through and I'm not uh, is because God knows your faith stronger than mine uh, and God knows you can make it through it uh, I might not could have made it through it uh, and so God sent me through the water uh, I don't know if that helps you any but that's helped me a whole lot uh, uh, in, in my walk with God uh, okay number two we're, we're, we're going around won't take long uh, number two uh, it is both our privilege uh, and our responsibility uh, to bring our palms uh, and our willows before the Lord yes. uh, uh, the Bible said that they were to bring willows uh, and palms before the Lord uh, uh, not just one and not the other not, not one and not the other one uh, uh, no sir the Bible said they were to bring palms uh, and willows before for the Lord. There, verse 40. And ye shall take you on the first day uh, the boughs of goodly trees and branches of palm trees uh, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice uh, uh, before the Lord. Uh, uh, now, why? Why does God want us to bring both of them before the Lord? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because we need to find grace uh, uh, to be able to ever which one we got. Uh, uh, we need to find grace. Uh, if you got a palm branch, uh, uh, you need to find grace. Uh, uh, Paul uh, was stoned and left outside the city. Uh, I believe that's when he was caught up into the third heaven. Uh, and Paul saw things that were not lawful for a man to utter. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 7 through 10, uh, he said, Lest I should be exalted above measure uh, through the abundance of the revelation there were given to me a thorn in the flesh. Uh, the messenger of Satan abundant me lest I should be exalted above measure. Measure for this thing I besought the Lord Christ uh, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, uh, My grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Uh, he said, Most gladly, therefore, uh, will I rather glory in my infirmities uh, that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Uh, in other words, Paul said, I like this best, uh, uh, but I'm willing to take this. Uh, and I've got to place in my life that I'm kind of glad to see this coming. Uh, he said, because when I see this coming, uh, that means God's going to give me more grace. Uh, yeah. uh, God's going to give me more grace and more power uh, right. uh, to be able to deal with that. Uh, the Bible said in Hebrews 4, 14 and 16, seeing 10, that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, yeah. uh, let us hold fast our profession for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched uh, with the feelings of our infirmities, but when all points uh, uh, was tempted like we are yet without sin, uh, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace uh, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Uh, yeah. uh, let me ask you something, be honest with me tonight. Uh, uh, when do you do the most praying? Uh, uh, when you're waving this uh, or when you're waving this? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I know myself, uh, uh, I pray some with this, uh, but I do some real praying uh, uh, when I get to waving this. Say, man, uh, I, I do business with God. Uh, and that's what Paul was saying. Uh, and Paul was saying, uh, when I go through these things, uh, I know my Lord was tempted at all points, even like that I was, uh, uh, yet without sin. Uh, and Paul said, every time I go through these willow places, uh, every time I go through these uh, uh, willow roads and willow spots, uh, he said, that every time I do, I, I'm able to fellowship a little bit more with Jesus. Yeah. I, I know what it is to be lonely. I, I know what it is to be forsaken. I know what it is to suffer. I know what it is to bear a cross. Yes. Uh, see, Jesus, 
had more of this in his 33 years. Yes. But he did this. Yes. Now, this might shock you, but we need more grace to bear this than we do to bear this, really. You say, why? Well, Deuteronomy 8, verse 6 through 14. God said, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, land of brooks and waters and fountains, depths that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of uh, uh, all olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt uh, eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything, uh, a land whose stones are iron and whose hills thou mayest dig brass, uh, when thou eatest uh, and are full. In other words, when you're waving that palm branch, uh, the bills are all paid, you're healthy, uh, your marriage is together, your kids are doing right. Uh, whenever you get in that kind of place, the Lord said, when thou hast eaten and are full, when thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which thou hast given thee, beware. 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 He said, thou, that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Yeah. You know when you forget God? Um, yeah. you're, you're ahead too much on payments. You know when you forget God, you and your wife, everything's going great. Kids are making good grades. That's when you forget God. Yeah. You know when you remember God? Yeah. Phone rings and they said, we just arrested your kid. We got him down here to jail. Yeah. You won't forget God then. Right. You know when you won't forget God when you walk in the doctor's office and he said, I need to see you in my office. Mm. And he said, uh, you got some cancer. you got a problem. You won't forget God then. Yeah. Right. You won't forget God then. That's why I said it takes, it takes more grace. More grace then. Now, the Bible tells us that we're to take both of them there. We're to rejoice before the Lord. We're to thank God for the good times. We're to thank God for the bad times. Yes. I mean, they had some bad times when they come out of Egypt. They had some glorious good times, but they had some bad times. Yes. God said, when you come in there, that feast of tabernacles, you bring willows and you bring palms and you praise me for the good times and the bad. Yeah. You see, First Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. He said, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Did you know the Bible tells us, commands us in Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and discourse with praise. Uh, be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Uh, his mercy is everlasting. His truth endure forever. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord. Uh, oh, my soul, forget not all his benefits. Uh, who forgiveth thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life? Uh, uh, from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, uh, that thy youth is renewed like an eagle. Uh, yes, God said, You praise me for the good. Yeah. God said in Matthew 5, verse 11 and 12, Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Amen. God said, His palm leaves. But you rejoice anyway. Yes. You thank me anyway. He said rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. So persecuted by the prophets. Which were before you. My brethren count it all joy. When you fall in the divers temptations. Yes. Uh, knowing this. That the trial of your faith work with patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. 
For when he has tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Right. Amen. The missionary said he's over in Africa. They were leading a safari, so to speak. And they came to a, a big river. They came to a, a, a swift river. And he noticed that all the all the natives, they, uh, they all looked around and they all got them a big rock, a big bird, a big load to carry. And they started down in that water. And when they did, he seen why they had that big stone. It weighted them down, kept them from being washed away on downstream. Yeah. Sometimes God burdens you and me down with heavy loads and burdens and He don't do it to hurt us, but He does it to keep us from being washed away down the river of this old world. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, now we come to the end. Part you like this. <laughs> talking about palms and wolves. The Bible said Revelation 7, verse 9 and 12. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. And they cried with a loud voice, Salvation to our God, which sat upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts and fell down before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth would pass away. Amen. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride and adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice said of heaven and said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and, I, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, I, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, I, and there shall be no more dead, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I, I want to say, lastly, eternity, I, we'll have all. All of God's people there uh, uh, with nothing but palm yeah. trees in their hands. Thank God. Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, when we depart this whole life, uh, when we bring our last breath, uh, uh, when they pull the sheet up over us, uh, when the Lord comes and calls us out, how uh, uh, we going to drop them old willow leaves? Uh, and all we going to have for them all eternity uh, is nothing but palm leaves and worship hey. and good. Praise it, our God. Amen. Amen. Praise it, our God. Praise God. If you're here tonight, not saved, mm. may not be nobody like that. It's going to be right opposite for you. You got it as good right now as you're ever going to have it. But when death comes, or the Lord calls, you're going to drop the palm leaf. Nothing else good is going to ever happen to you. And you're going out into eternity with nothing but willows. Yeah, right. Trouble, sorrow, pain, problems forever and ever. Yes. And while we're up doing this, like while the ages rose, you'll be down there with me and doing this. Because you had to drop that when you left this old world. You see, God blessed you today. Ma'am, or sir, you ain't even served him. You ain't even living for him, but God still give you a few palm leaves to wave. But when you die, that's it. You won't get to keep them. Yeah. The message tonight is palms and willows. If you got willows tonight, I want to encourage you to say this. This too shall come to pass. Yeah. If you got palm leaves tonight, we ought to just get in this thing tonight and just wave them and thank God and yes. praise God and give glory to Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Folks sitting here in this room tonight, <clears throat> you and I both know people, hundreds of people that died with COVID. But you're still here. 
Some of you had it. God bless you, make it through it. God bless you. you say, why did he leave me and take somebody else? I don't know, but it gets into the realm of the business of God. But the only reason I said that was this. Well, we don't have a palm leaf to wave tonight. We're sitting here in revival. By believers, Baptist Church, Hillsborough, Ohio. We made it through it. We got something to praise God for. Amen. Father, I thank you.